I will be continuing with my lecture of diabetes recent advances. Before that, I have already done two lectures on recent advances. I hope you have seen it. If not, you can see in the YouTube. So in continuation, today we'll talk about incretin effect and the incretomimetic drugs. So before we discuss the pharmacology and medicine of this drug, let's learn the basic physiology of incretin effect. Basic concepts. Okay. Well, all of you know that whenever we eat food, blood sugar goes high and insulin also goes high. In short, as the blood sugar goes high, I for insulin level also go high. In other words, lowest level of sugar and insulin is early morning fasting. This is the basic physiology. Now, a couple of years back, they did an experiment. And what the experiment was, they took two group of people. To one group, they give oral glucose. And to other, give, other group, they give intravenous glucose. And the same amount of glucose was given in the two groups. And later on, they uh, checked the insulin level. What they expected was, as the amount of glucose given is in was equal in both the group, they expected that serum insulin should be equal or near equal. They expected serum insulin to be equal or near equal. But to your surprise and my surprise, serum insulin level was I. I stand for insulin level was much higher in the over oral group. Okay. Now it was a surprise. Ki how could uh, people given oral glucose was serum insulin was much, much higher as compared to intravenous. On further investigation, they found in those patients, people, normal people who were given oral glucose, their intestinal cells only, they secrete two compound GIP, GL, P1. Now these two molecules which are being secreted from the pancreas, from the intestinal cell, they go to pancreas. This is the pancreas. And this is the beta cell. Beta cell. Which have a preformed insulin. I. They cause, they go to pancreas. And they cause the release of this preformed insulin, which is in the form of pro-insulin. So this insulin is released from the beta cell. And if you recall your pharmacology, same action is done by sulfonylurea. Sulfonylurea also do the same thing. They go to pancreas and they cause the release of preformed insulin. That's why sulfonylurea are also known as insulin secretogogue. Insulin secretogogue is the what the term we call as. So now we have a two endogenous molecules which can do the same thing. Now more physiology. But the action of these two molecules is very short, only few minutes because they are soon degraded by enzyme DPP4. By this enzyme, these molecules are degraded. That's the basic physiology. That's why the action is very short. So when this concept became clear, the, all the pharmacology uh, companies that wanted to get any drug which which can be GIP, GLP, one agonist, because they knew if we are able to get any molecule which can cause 
increased secretion of GIP GLP-1, it will cause release of preformed insulin and insulin level will go high. Okay, so we got certain drug which can cause increased secretion of GIP GLP-1. Okay. And in fact, this what I discussed, this effect is known as incretin effect. This effect is known as incretin effect in the physiology. Now drugs which I'll be discussing will be incretomimetic drugs. So one more thing, one more thing, what they have found, if we get any drug, which is a DPP-4 inhibitor, It will definitely delay the breakdown of GIP GLP-1. So we got DPP-4 inhibitor drug also. Okay. So first we talk about the, the GIP GLP-1 agonist. Then I'll talk to you regarding DPP-4 inhibitors. GIP GLP one agonist These are injection exinatide injection lira glue tight these are GIP GLP one agonists there are four there are few more molecules which have been there in the same category but purpose is to give you the idea of what these drugs are now as I told you there are certain drugs which are DPP 4 inhibitors They are tablet citagliptin tablet vildagliptin and there are many more molecules in the same category. Okay. Now few things I like to highlight for you. Well you know if I you if you use this drug uh, serum insulin level will go high but this drug should be given first why because if we give this drug first and the DPP4 will be enzyme will be under control so so this degradation will be slowed down so that's why these drugs are usually given first and after that these are given an extra advantage of this drug is they are tablets in contrast to these which are injections and of course third point they these are much costlier injection as compared to this one okay and recently one more molecule has been added in this category injection dulaglutide and it is said that it, it can be given in once a week also. Okay, it's a, it's a very long acting drug and the extra advantage of this drug is they cause weight loss. Weight loss. But cost is always a consideration. They are very expensive drug so cannot be used in a routine a type of patients. So this is about incretin effect and the incretomimetic drugs. Now we have other effect is amylin effect. Let's see what is the effect and what are the drugs that we have for that. The so second new concept is amylin effect. Again, we first learn the basic concept. about the physiology. 
when we eat food normally okay our body also secrete one compound called amylin they also secrete one compound amylin what does it do first of all in the physiology it increases gastric emptying time it increases gastric emptying time now all of you know that normal gastric emptying time is 2 hours and after 2 hours the food come come from intestine to it come to the uh, from, from stomach it come to intestine and this how the sugar start rising like this now what this uh, molecule does that it slow down the gastric emptying time so if we get a drug which is a amylin agonist will further slow down the gastric emptying gastric emptying may be delayed for three to four hours now the rise of sugar will slope will be reduced fair enough we understood by increasing gastric emptying time we are lowering down the slope of absorption of blood sugar but what else it does <coughs> although this effect is also done by the GIP GLP1 agonist but it is also a more prominent feature of uh, amylin but one more effect of this molecule is reduce glucagon levels this is a very important point so let's learn the basic concept all of you know that pancreas secrete two hormones alpha cells secrete glucagon and beta cell they secrete insulin and it is known to you that in type 1 patient only beta cells are destroyed alpha cells are normal so this is insulin this is this is glucagon insulin reduces blood sugar insulin reduces blood sugar glucagon increases blood sugar okay and in type 1 patient only beta cells are destroyed alpha cells are normal now insulin was discovered way back in 100 years back in this 100 year we have treated diabetes by giving insulin directly or any drug which acts via insulin you talk about of any drug any anti diabetic drug like sulfonylurea what the, what do they do they simply cause release of preformed insulin okay so all action whatever drug we are are via ins, insulin only now we we know it very well that glucagon causes increased secretion of insulin now what they think why not to reduce the glucagon level because if you reduce the glucagon level sugar will go down in fact the, in the near future the perhaps the treatment of diabetes will change drastically we may be focusing more on reducing gluca glucagon level now in our body we have a compound called amylin which increases gastric time as well as reduces glucagon level so that time also all the drug company were trying to get a drug which is a amylin agonist and we got a drug now the amylin agonist drug is injection premlentide premlentide the injection premlentide injection premlentide increases gastric emptying time and reduces glucagon level and thereby the sugar is reduced since it is its effect is via glucagon that's why this drug can be given in type 1 diabetes also okay this can remember till a couple of years back the only treatment for type 1 diabetes was insulin but now we know in type 1 diabetes we can give injection pembrolizumab and one more thing which i discussed last time that we can in type 1 we can also give alpha glucosidase inhibitors 
like a carbose which inhibit the enzyme which are going to digest complex carbohydrate so as of now two new things are premlintide and duct like a carbose can be given in type 1 diabetes okay this for all this all for today's uh, lecture in the next lecture i'll be talking more recent advances on diabetes in the meantime i have already recorded many lectures they are in youtube do see it and if you want to see any particular topic you get connected to me via messenger i'll be too happy to to uh, include topic of your interest thank you very much bye bye